Hello everyone, welcome to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob and this is the 25th episode in my third Age of Wonders 3 Advanced Strategy Series. Uh, thanks for being patient with me over the weekend. I know I haven't released an episode in about a week. Um, I installed Skyrim Special Edition and uh, have been playing that with my new graphics card set up and everything and I've been really just enjoying that a lot. It's, it's nice to get back into it. I forgot how much I love Skyrim. It's a great, great game. Did you know there are some fruits that... Bye, have a great time! And uh, so it's nice to be back into that, but I will keep my promise at least one episode a week. It'll probably usually be a little more than that, but at least one new Age of Wonders episode a week. Um, things might change a little bit going into the next series, since for those of you who don't know, the current plan is to have a co-op series, so that's also going to depend on a little bit on uh, the other guy's schedule. Uh, it will not be Evan, by the way, somebody new. Um, but yeah, so just general update there so you guys know what's going on. Um, the comment that I wanted to go over this week comes from Chickenhead, and it actually doesn't have anything to do with my game, but just in case you guys weren't aware, Age of Wonders 3 is going to get a new patch soon. It's going to add a little bit of new content for us, which is nice to see, nice to see the developers still coming out with uh, a new stuff to you know, add to the game, uh, keep it fresh and new. I suspect this one may have been, in part at least, inspired by uh, one of the most popular mods for Age of Wonders. And I don't really know a lot about mods. I apologize, I don't even remember the name. I think it might be Old Man in the Sea or something like that. You can read about it featured on Triumph's website. Um, it's like one of the second things on the Age of Wonders 3 website. I think the first thing is about the Poseidon patch. Um, the next thing talks about like popular mods for Age of Wonders 3. And I think it was the top mod on there, added some new water stuff. So what this patch is going to do is going to add two things. It's going to add sea fortresses and coral reefs, which will give a little bit more of an emphasis on the water gameplay. Sea fortresses behave much like normal fortresses. Um, they just give you some domain, but in the water, so you can grab up those water resource structures a little easier. And then coral reefs give population and gold. And I'm hoping that you can corrupt the coral reefs for undead population. I mentioned that on the forums. We'll see if that makes it into the patch. Um, but yeah, it should be nice to see a little more emphasis on Navy combat. But that all being said, let's go ahead and just jump right into this episode. Um, I'm going to run down here and clear this structure as I've been planning to do. Probably don't necessarily need to, but I could use the gold and should be able to... Uh, oh yeah, I'm going to wreck that Manacore Rider. Shadow of Stalkers are a great counter to Elf Manacore Riders because they can't get stunned. And Elf Manacore Riders have inflict stun. So I'm going to use the Shadow Stalker to kind of lure him in. I can't convert the Manticore Rider, but I can convert, I think, pretty much any other unit in here. What else do we have for that matter? There's a couple Griffins, a couple Berserkers. They're all Elves, except for the Griffins. I could probably... What do the Griffins have? They wouldn't really be that useful to me. I think I'd rather just get the Berserker and have another heavy hitter in my army. Alright, let's see if I can coax them into doing something dumb. Some setup like this ought to work. Come at me, bro. Come on. Alright, I don't think we need to be too careful. I'm going to force their hand and move those Shadow Stalkers up. They aren't really threatened by anything in here. Because of how much physical resistance they have. And that's pretty much all the damage I'm going to have to deal with. Oh, and they have... Who has regrowth? Wait. Oh, okay. I got that from the... Oh, that's kind of nice. I got that from the um, one of the structures that I ran through on the way here. Anyway, do these guys have charge? I can't remember. For some reason I was thinking they did, but they do not. At least not naturally. Either way, he's going to absolutely wreck that poor griffin's day. 
Let's see, I can try to seduce stuff. Actually, you know what? Berserkers have mind control immunity. I can't berserk, or I can't seduce them. The only units I can seduce actually happen to be those griffins, so I may as well give it a try, I suppose. Need to be a little careful. I want to make sure I use up that thing's movement points if I can. Because I don't want him flying off and hitting somebody else. Now, let's see what the odds of seduce would be. 60%. I don't feel like I really have time in this situation to throw a curse at it. But I gotta be really careful with what I do here. Because I don't want to lose anybody. So I think... The Saber Chariot's obvious approach is going to be to go around back, hit that guy. I could flank him for quite a bit of damage, and maybe I could actually finish him off. I think I'm just going to try to kill that guy while I have the chance, because I think I can do enough damage. Trying to decide what would be best. He's an elf. Mosquito darts would do up to 13, but I think this would do slightly more, up to 14. Either one has a chance of severely poisoning him. Do I have any other options for throwing stuff? No, not really. Alright, I'm gonna go with whatever one does the most damage. Wasn't quite enough to kill him. Oh wait, but finish with those guys. Now that griffin's gonna die if I let it live any longer. I'm a little worried about them going after the saber two chariot, but he's got enough health that I think he'll be fine. Problem is this guy's completely out of. I think I'll. I, I think I'll be okay. I'm gonna at least give it a try. Now, all that. Didn't get it anyway. Yeah, I thought they might go after him. Alright, well, everybody's got regrowth, so it's not like it really matters that much. Let's web him for fun. And. There we go. No new units out of there, but I got... Ooh, there's a couple of good units in there. Um, yeah, I'll take both of those. And I still get 206 gold. That's a pretty easy choice, I think. Solid units. Let's see, uh, I think we can drop the Saber 2 Chariot to pick up another Tier 3 here. In my main army. Which one do I want? A Sphinx or a Flyer? I think I've got pretty much melee covered with those two Shadow Stalkers, so I'm going to go with the Sphinx to have another range attacker option. And because of all my upgrades for support units. I never did really make Sphinxes. That was another uh, aspect of this class that I, I kind of looked forward to using, was the fact that all, my, all those uh, irregular unit bonuses you get from having the Explorer specialization, most of those apply to sphinx sphinxes, with the exception of the one that's like trail walking, since sphinxes have lesser flying. That doesn't apply to them. Uh, insufficient funds for the next Shadow Stalker, which is no longer true, but I have to close it and then reorder it. There we go. And that one's already paid for, and this one I can't pay for. So I'm going to set that to merchandise for now. Save a little bit more money. And send this guy out. Alright, I had a group here that were all kind of bundling together to go after that city down there. I felt like there was a fourth one for some reason. I mean, I, there's obviously this guy, but he's not going to catch up with the others in time. Make it to that. I think that'll regrow on the next... Nope, that won't be done on the next turn. Well, I guess it was just these guys, these three here, who I was going to go in and, and wreck some stuff with. Um, I guess we can start with that magic library. 
It's only a probable victory, but I feel okay about it because two of those units do poison damage. Probably be fine. These guys are immune to poison, by the way, in case I didn't mention that. Um, I don't really see any reason to hesitate too much here. Let's just move up. Stay just out of range for them to get the full number of hits on me. Ah, right, weakening. Doesn't matter that much. Although these guys resist some of the damage that I do too, so there's that. Let's get in this guy's face. Uh, I have backstab, so I may as well use it. Right, backstab doesn't really work on undead. Anyway, I did want to turn him around. He'll probably hit this guy. And everyone just heals themselves. That's a mistake on their part. Because now... Now they're all going to die horribly. I want to backstab that priest really bad. That sounds horrible. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> um, but I'm going to take two hits from this guy on the way to do it, and I don't think that's worth it. So instead, I'll just come sit there. And not priest evangelist, by the way. Yeah, see, I was worried about him doing a little more damage. Evangelists have a pretty strong melee attack. But I am fine. Voluntary union, some research, nothing too fancy there. Um, on their way down to get that good stuff, we will wipe these things out. I don't see how this is closely matched. They can only do melee damage. They have blight protection, I suppose. And part of my melee... No, I don't have any blight damage on their melee attacks. I don't really know why this is closely matched. I kind of feel like I'll absolutely destroy these things. Because all they can do is physical damage. So, in the absence of anything else going on in this battle, what I would prefer to do is back everybody up. Since these guys are clearly going to charge. And then, like, move this guy here. Move this guy here. And probably this guy. He's the weak one, so I don't want to leave him. I'm going to move him back here so he's kind of sheltered behind everything else. Maybe I'll take away a couple of his movement points here. There we go. Oh, he's going to crit me. Oh, he's going to crit him. that they're shooting at me. I didn't realize these guys had a range attack. Huh. No, I guess they did melee attack them. It, it, for some reason, it looked like they shot something at me. Anyway. Uh, I think, in this case, better to defend. Probably could have done that with a little bit more finesse with backstab and whatnot, selling that for gold. Which will allow me to make another Shadow Stalker. Pretty much my whole strategy right now is build Shadow Stalkers. Apologize for the spam of just one type of unit, but with only one type of enemy, and I have one very good counter, doesn't really make a lot of sense to spend much money or research on anything else. Nightshade Hollow. I will get 
nightshade fairies because they're amazing. I could actually use some floating units around that general area with all these islands out here just to make sure Groka doesn't expand somewhere that I don't want her to go. Speaking of which, I have this city here to take care of right smack in the middle of everything. That was going to be the job of this army here, and I think they should be able to handle it just fine. I'm going to move in and get a sense of what I'm about to run into before I run into it. Nothing of any... nothing that has me concerned. Hang out just outside but I don't think they're going to have time to build up a big enough army to stop what I've got coming at them. Oh yeah, longbowmen in one more turn. And that's right, I had this saber tooth chariot coming to join with them to provide a little extra backup for that army. Or was it going down to that city? I think it was actually going down to that city. Yeah, I needed reinforcements in that city. Because I really do want to start pushing with this group. Attacking Grelka from a different direction. Um, you know what? Hang on a sec. I'm going to make this decision based on alignment, because that's getting kind of high. And I need to keep that at neutral. So definitely want to do the bad guy choice here. A lot of druid units in this one, two hunters and a shaman. Not so much in terms of animals, which is a shame because I have a druid myself that could take over an animal. All right, well, we need to look at this as an opportunity for the snake to get XP. It's already a veteran. I think next is expert and then elite. And once he hits elite, the the tier 3 shock serpents are much, much easier to level up. Um, I could try befriending the horse, which is dedicated to good. He would be pretty much relegated to the role of a scout, I think. I Honestly, I think I'd rather just get the XP from killing him. Well, you know what? I could use him down in that other city to help defend since this army's kind of leading. I feel like any extra units down there would be helpful. Okay. We'll, uh, I'll let him charge in, actually. Um, except that he's gonna be able to hit pretty much anything he wants. You know what? That's fine. I'm not worried about it, because the other units out there won't be able to hit me. They're a little too far back. Well, when I say hit me, I mean do a significant amount of damage to me. Okay. Better chance of trying to convert that thing now. Let's see, I might be able to charm one of the hunters. These guys should probably defend, because I might need that curse again in a minute here. I need to be careful with those hunters, with the spider around those hunters, because... Yeah, I'm gonna back everybody up, because the hunters will do extra damage to the spider. I actually would prefer to keep the spider out of the way. Let those black tight knights take most of the punishment. Ah. My animal. Okay, now I've got plenty of options. Tons and tons of options. So we have a goblin hunter and an orc hunter. The goblins... I don't really know what the difference between them is other than the orcs have the spear that they can throw. Goblins would be useful, perhaps, because I've got so much underground stuff. The Orc Hunters have Warcry, though. That's kind of cool. And they have shields. 
Well, if we're thinking of something to defend the walls of that other city down there, I think the goblin would be more useful as being an archer. Because I've already got some melee units in that city. So, what I'd like to do is curse the goblin hunter, which actually worked. I didn't really expect it to because of their poison resistance. But that's cool. Um, then I can try to charm him. Okay, got it. So far, so good. Uh, that snake. So the shaman does fairly little damage to that snake in retaliation. I'm not... They don't have, uh, animal hunter or whatever it is. Yeah, they don't do bonus damage versus animals. And do fairly small amount of melee damage. I feel like this would be a great opportunity to get beat up on by a tier 3 unit for XP. I'm going to do that. Yeah, there we go. That helped him rank up like 10 points or more. That's cool. Alright, and then I can just kill those guys. Um, not sure who I'm going to do it with yet, but I think the Black Knight is going to kill that Orc Hunter. Oh, goodbye. Just get absolutely crushed. Alright, I have to make sure that I can kill these guys. Which damage would I do with three shots of the bow? It should be enough to kill them. You know what? I'm not going to take chances. I'm going to shoot them. And then kill them with the spider. Alright, cool. Good battle. Uh, two more units. Which will go on defense. Oh, yes! And another Nightshade Fairy. I think this is like, what, the fourth or fifth Nightshade Fairy I've gotten from these Springs of Life? I'm getting crazy lucky as far as that goes. Um, the Nightshade Fairy is probably good enough to come with this group. I don't know who it should replace, though. It's actually kind of a tough choice because these two need to stay together. And that Black Knight really gives me a nice heavy hitter in a group that... You know, I might need the Nightshade Fairy down here. That would be a great unit to have up on the walls, depending on what the druid throws at me. And would make... I've got three units in there already. Yeah, I think the extra... I'd rather have the extra security down here with the, with the Nightshade Fairy, I think. Alright. And then these guys can just move on along. That's been a remarkably successful army right there. Uh, that's not good. None of that's good. There are green units underground. And undead dragons. Um, well, those green units are probably headed at this city here. I need to send something or someone to deal with them. What is in that army? Shock Trooper, Shaman, Fell Horse. Uh, well, I might be able to get a Shadow Stalker out there. Because I could float him right across the lake. This guy, I think I'm going to send up here. And I'm going to go ahead and order up another Sabertooth Chariot. And I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, you know what? I need a little more money. I can't can't quite get that. Um, I need gold. Right now I really wish he was near somewhere where he could dig, but he's not. He's probably going to get killed by those undead on the next turn. Try to barricade him down in here as far as he can go. Oh, there's treasure back there. Right along the river there. I never noticed that. Um, maybe the fairy could fly over there and grab that. The fairy or the snake that can swim. Anyway, I need to think of a way to get more gold before the end of this turn. Where is this guy at? He isn't too far away from all the goings on up there. He could get the haste berries on the next turn. Might be able to beat those guys back to wherever they're heading. All 
All right, I'm gonna do a little contingency plan here. So I need another army near that cave entrance, it seems. He'll go that way, that guy will go that way. This city, I'm probably not gonna have enough money, um, so I'm going to just let it produce gold for this turn. I have to select that. I can get a little more money out of here. Um, I haven't, you know what, I have enough Shadow Stalkers in the, wait, could he make it there in the next turn? Okay, I've got enough Shadow Stalkers in the area that I can handle this. I can buddy them up on the next turn, they can both get the Haste Berries, and be back up to block those orcs pretty quickly. And then I'll send this guy over for a little extra insurance, meaning I don't need that, uh, the tight, wait, yeah, keep producing infinitely, meaning I don't need the, uh, Sabertooth Chariot, meaning that I have enough gold to produce another Shadow Stalker in the city. Now, where were these guys at? They're kind of lagging behind, but I don't think they're anywhere near. Yeah, they wouldn't be able to do anything useful. They're a little too slow. Well, that's not true in this guy's case. He could make it, he could probably catch it pretty easily. Uh, but I'm going to keep sending them to the front lines because they're already kind of down here. Let's see, that seems to be rock. That's dirt. Alright, these armies are finally all gathered together and seem to have enough power to move forward, I think. It's time to start charging. I'm not going to try to stop and take out the lost city. Although I probably could. I don't want to risk any units right now. These all these all need to be going after Grelka. Let's see. I want to make sure they all kind of move at the same pace. We can move at least two more spaces each. As long as everybody has at least three movement, they can get a little further. Alright. I'm going to have them wait there in a triangle, just in case. And within sight of her next city, hopefully this means that anything she was thinking about pushing up with this direction, she has to pull back in defense of this city. Um, and I don't know what to do. Oh wait, I know exactly what to do with these penguins. You guys are going to go pick up that treasure that I saw earlier. And then Saber 2 Chariot's going to basically be back up. Okay, got that mana that I wanted. And I'm going to use him as a scout to scout Groka's area above ground once I get there. Alright, um, I had spotted units in this area, and I was building Shadow Stalkers to ward them off. <clears throat> um, I don't know where they went. I'm going to keep these guys here for the moment, just in case they come back. But I have a pretty good view, and I could respond pretty quickly if they went after any other cities. On that note, I'm going to move them like to this position here so they can still defend the city, but they're just a bit closer to anything else out there. These guys were, I think, pretty much done for this turn. They're all kind of beat up, so I'm going to let them just chill out. And that'll be it. I, uh could cast spells. Oh yeah, that's right. I want to get Shield of Dispassion up and running. Oh, and I get Sadism on the next turn too. That might be helpful. That'll actually be really nice for those Shadow Stalkers, which all have... Oh, what have we got here? A lot of stuff just went on. Well, that's about what I expected to happen to the giant city. The undead from the camp went and took it, but that's fine. More important that I'm going after Groka. 
who managed to get up to six units to defend that city with, so we'll have a little bit of a fight there. Um, somewhere I got hit by Sunburst. As long as they didn't kill any units, I'm okay. I don't think they did. Oh, that poor orc. That poor orc wandered into the wrong part of town. Uh, how far can she move? She's got enough to go one, two, but would not be able to make it all the way back. So I'm just going to have to go with one succubus. And I'll just take one, one shadow stalker. I think that'll be enough. And we're going to get another orc unit. Right, go ahead, buddy. Attack him. See what happens. I know how I'll do this. We'll let him run in an attack. Obviously, I don't want the Greatsword to die. But that lowers their guard, so that Throw Curse will work on them. More likely, anyway. They resisted, but I'm going to move him away. And they can't really move anywhere now. See where they go. I'm gonna try cursing them again. Obviously, I can't let the uh, can't let the shadow stalker hit them again. Curse has an incredibly long range, so I can afford to like move out completely out of their movement range and just throw it at will. There we go. I'm just gonna have to try to seduce them as they are. There we go. little extra backup. Anything they send this way just becomes part of my army. Rogues are very, very, very good. Tigran race governance upgrade. Okay, all Tigran support units get invigorate. Uh, temples in Tigran cities now generate 200 happiness and give extra metal to all produce units. Ooh, having an extra metal on my shadow stalkers would be pretty nice. Um, but all Tigran support units get invigorate. That's interesting. I want to look up what that does. I'm pretty sure that like restores movement points for other Tigran units. And if that's the case, I think I've got to go with that one. Yeah, restores all the action movement points of the target Tigran unit. That's, uh, that's a little too good to pass up, I think. That could come in really handy. As long as I can remember that I have it. Um, I do want to research Greater Disjunction. That's a nice insurance policy to have. Although Cloak and Dagger is only going to cost one turn, so I'm going to grab that real quick. And I'm going to cast my uh, Shield of Dispassion spell. So now all of my units gain plus one resistance and plus two defense unless they get flanked. Which I try to avoid allowing, letting that happen very often. There's a ziggurat right there, right along my way. I think I'll go ahead and clear that too. That would give a lot of extra gold per turn, which I could definitely use. Is this city wanting production? Nope, different city. I would like to, you know, I'm gonna upgrade this city as though I were going to turn it into an epic dwarf firstborn producing city. Um, no, no, you know what? Even though I did clear that, I don't think it'd be an efficient use of my money at this point. I should be focusing on things like magic generation. So I'll go ahead and build a temple. Oh, I got a new item for this guy. He's already wearing it, so that's good. 
Alright, let's move up into enemy territory and see what we find. Huh, just a measly little army. You're not going to stand a chance. I could have attacked a lot earlier if I wanted to. Alright, well, let's uh, put them there. And I know that army can at least move to that spot. They can move there. Now, just standing right outside their walls, they're going to have to think fast. Oh, there was another army up there that I, I just caught out of the corner of my eye. Oh, just a, another, okay, just another archer. Not a big deal. Oh, right, that's where I was getting the other Shadowstalker from. That city was producing him. All right, these guys are a little beat up, so I am going to let them heal in uh, in town here. Do I have... I don't have a hospital in this city yet. I could kind of use one. How much health do they need to regenerate? That would take a little while. I am going to go ahead and build a hospital there. It doesn't hurt to have one. No, wait, I can't even afford Well, I get money here. You know what? I'm not going to because that city's already really happy. You can see there. There's no reason to try to bump it up even further. Other than to hurry Shadow Stalker production if I wanted to do that. Which I don't think I need to. I'm going to go ahead and just check that. And I think they'll regenerate like 6 health per turn. Which is going to take this guy. That'll take him a while to get back up there. Like 8-9 turns. You know what? I will go ahead and produce that. Because if I build the public baths and get extra happiness... I can then use the extra happiness to hurry production and get more Shadow Stalkers faster. Alright. Now these guys are actually ready to go party. Um, so let's go kill something. Finally get to use some Elf Longbowmen. Okay, so there's really no way to do this other than just letting those things flank you. That guy's got more resistance than anybody else. I could probably, like, assassinate one of them. I could go assassinate one. You know, that's not a bad idea, actually. As long as, yeah, you resist that static shield. They'll teleport onto him to flank him, because they always do. Which, he's got more resistance or defense than any of my other units, so he'll be fine. Kind of want them flanking units because they don't do very much damage. I uh, mean, because uh, when hitting back, I won't hit them and get electrocuted because they have static shield. Speaking of hitting them and getting electrocuted, well, I want the spider to get some XP. Okay, he got electrocuted. <coughs> Oops. Okay, not paying attention here. Shoot that guy. There we go. And how about... No. I'll take him out with a range unit. Getting a little bit of channeling points with every one of these units I kill too, which is kind of nice. Uh, let's wait a turn, give that assassin a chance to heal up before going into the next battle. Okay, research breakthrough here. Um, that city's already got its orders. And I just now realized something. Well, first off, this city should probably go to producing merchandise every turn. Or actually, let's say build housing. Build housing for the foreseeable future. Um, I'm just going to put that on infinite and I'll probably forget about it, but I want that city to grow. I have literally have a monkey sailing around the ocean in a boat. That's my great scouting. Alright, I should be able to get rid of that city on this turn. Now I... I wanted to... Oh yeah, down here. I don't need any more razor bows in this city. I was building them for defense, but I don't think I need that anymore. 
I've got more than enough pressure on that city. In fact, I could almost abandon this city and send all my units above ground this way. But I think I would rather have these guys go down to join up with my other army and one huge force to go after a capital. These guys are more like going on a flanking route to make sure nothing sneaks up on me from an unexpected direction. And to get extra units by converting and befriending things. Tigran, Frostling, Reanimator, Orc Apprentice I could get. The other three are Reanimators, which I cannot get. So, pretty much just hoping to walk away from this battle with the Orc Apprentice. Um, hang back, make sure I can get all three shots off. And I'm going to try to curse one of them. So I, I would like to web the Orc Apprentice, but I want to make sure I can do enough damage to the rest of these reanimators first. I do have Spirit Rays, which is kind of nice for this situation. How do I want to do this? I want to make use of my charge ability with that. Alright, here's an idea. Damage to them. Oh, very nearly killed them. Which would do more damage? The Spirit Ray, which would do up to 15, or the Gun, which would do up to 35. Uh, it's gotta be the Gun. Alright. On that note, I can move them up. Web the Apprentice, who actually resisted it. Good for them. Um, I get this guy up here, move him forward a little bit. Snakes can't get in on this action this turn. The Bard can snipe the reanimator, finish him off. And these guys can war cry and charge hard right into that guy right there. And then the snakes can hopefully come up and get a kill, but probably not, I'm sure. Well, they can only hit me a couple times. They might, they'll probably actually try to back up and use a range attack. Yep. Alright, so the snakes are going to see a little action here. That's good. Uh, same as before, they can handle hits from those guys, and they're a tier 2 unit this time, so. There we go, they actually got the kill. I uh, would really, really love to make sure that they can get at least one more kill and level up into Shock Serpents. Uh, mature Shock Serpents on the next turn. Let's see, maybe I can, uh, maybe I can curse this guy in the back now. Alright, now that he has been cursed, I can try to charm him. Okay, got him. And then these guys then, I want to get rid of their movement. I don't know if I have anything that can do that with this hero. No webbing or entangling or anything like that as far as I can tell. So, what I'm going to do, they have, they have spirit damage on their melee strike. I'm going to go ahead and let him take a little, a couple hits use up that thing's movement points. Make sure that you can't do any significant amount of damage to anybody. Okay. So he can't move, which will give my snakes the opportunity to kill him. Allows me to heal them. And speaking of snakes, I can awaken them so they'll do a little extra damage. Go, snakes leveled up. So I now have Butcher Shock Serpents. Excellent. Alright, this army just became truly dangerous. And they're just going to continue on their epic crusade. Hopefully, pick up a few more orcs here. 
Broca's gonna get killed. My army's gonna be more orc than anything else by the time this game is over. Well, that's not true. I'll probably be more Shadow Stalker than anything else. But I'm going to have a lot of orcs. Alright, well, I want these guys in the middle of it now. They're tough enough to handle some orcs. Let's, uh... Let's go ahead and let them deal with the great swords on their own there. Um, the great swords will probably war cry if given the opportunity to land all three hits on me, so I will make sure they can only hit one, and that way that mitigates the effectiveness of war cry. I'm going to throw a curse on that impaler. And maybe see if I can pick him up. With the bard. And I'm just going to wait. Let's see how the rest plays out here. Yeah, I need these guys to lay off. Snakes can handle one-on-one, -on -one, no problem. And I want that impaler to let his guard down. Or I could try to web him. There we go, that works too. Uh, let's see. How about... How about... Awakened Spirit. These guys should be able to finish him off. Oh, I didn't do that right. Um, looks like I'm going to try to convert the spearmen instead. There we go. It avoids them doing a bunch of damage to one of my units. Wouldn't have mind having that guy, but... You know, now that I think of it, I probably should have tried to convert the Blight Doctor. That's alright, though. It doesn't really matter. Uh, well, no reason to buy an Orc Shock Trooper when I can get so many of them for free. Right, and then on the next turn they'll be popping out above ground, causing more trouble for the orcs. Um, what are you going to give me? An Archon Titan? It'll be dedicated to evil though, and I don't really want to spare the time and effort. Th those units are also in a really annoying spot. I'd have to get a group of Shadow Stalkers together. I don't want to deal with that. They can They can just run around, I don't care. Um, I'm going to pile up probably the best stack I can on the center tile, and then all the kind of extra units will be on the edges. Alright, and I don't need anything else in Bleg. I'm just going to let that produce gold for the remainder of the game. And I can go, I think I could go do that battle. Uh, I don't know how long that battle would take. I might save this one for the next episode. Um, let's see if there's anything else I can take care of right now. Those guys, I want to wait until that next Shadow Stalker is done, so they got three. Then maybe they'll ship out somewhere. Really wish I knew where those work units were sneaking around, but I don't see them anywhere. It's possible they pulled them back to help defend Ice Glade. Those may have been the units that actually moved into Ice Glade on the last turn. That shouldn't be too difficult of a... Well, no, they got a few range units up on that wall I'll have to watch out for. And my army could actually use another turn to heal up beforehand. What I think I will do... 
Make sure everybody has flowers of solace. Does this guy have healing? That's a dreadnought, so they, he is getting the guardian flame bonus for healing. I'll have to think about that, because if I wait a turn, then they might build another unit in there, like another trebuchet or something. That could be annoying. As of right now, I've got numbers, and my units are better, but I do have to get over that pesky wall. On the other hand, the swarm darter will be a little more useful, because I'm not shooting him over the wall and I'm dead now. I can actually use him for what he's really good for. Oh, but because of where I move the fairies, I won't be able to reach it on this turn anyway. Um... I'm going to actually send these Shadow Stalkers out now, just in case I need their help out there. Well, you know what? No, I'll wait for the next one and then send them out. Is it in a group of three? I think that'd probably be safer. Alright, um, I want this one to go up here and make sure he kind of cuts anybody off before they get to that city. See, so I've got one Shadow Stalker moving back to dealing with the group I saw. Fortunately, the uh, undead bone dragons and stuff didn't chase my prospector, so he should be free to dig around for a while longer. One of them I was thinking about moving back. No, it was okay, I had these two. They were going to buddy up here, get the haste berries, and then move along. Which hopefully they can shortcut through there. I don't really want them to have to run all the way around. Oh no, there's a rock wall on the way. Well, nuts. That wastes some movement. I didn't see that rock wall right there. I was thinking it was just that structure they needed to clear or something. That's alright. Um, I've got this guy on the way, so I should be able to join them all up pretty soon. I think the three of them should be enough to handle the force that I saw over there. So this guy's going to continue along the route he was taking. A little more dirt dug out here. And he's pretty much just an extra unit at this point. Um, might be worth leaving just a couple people back here to watch that cave entrance, just in case anything pops out. So I think I'm going to send him to do that. Maybe the pony rider, just to guard my flank. Since those guys don't really need to be on the front line. Okay. can dig a little more. I'm going to make a tunnel so that I can get flying units through quickly if I need to. Right now, I've been kind of being careful about what paths I block up, but now that I have Shadow Stalkers everywhere, I kind of feel like it, it, I'm, I'm more of an advantage if I clear out all these routes going around everywhere. Alright, the Crow. I want to go help the uh, main army ahead scout. Save my magic for now, just build up a little uh, supply of it. Yeah, there's nothing else that I really de necessarily need right now. Could incite revolt, but that just ruins the city happiness. Doesn't ruin the happiness of the units in it like Dread Siege does, which is far more useful when you're actually attacking a city. Alright, well, before I go to the next turn, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop it here, because I don't know what's going to happen in between turns. Could get attacked, draw the episode out a little longer. So I'm going to hold up, and uh, we'll continue in the next episode. I think I'm getting close to the end of this series here. It should just be, I think, at m I, I don't want to say a number, actually, of how many more episodes it'll take. But really, her capital, as soon as these units are healed up, which, by the way, now that I think of that... Oh, no, it's still absorbing population. I really want to build a hospital in this city, and I might hurry production to do that, because I'm kind of using it as a base of operations. This army could definitely use a healer, and uh, I just I don't have one. So once they're kind of healed up enough, I think they'll be charging in around the same time my other army's coming up through this way. Should be able to just crush them with an overwhelming number of units, and hopefully my remaining units, like my druid army, can deal with this city up here 
and and take that out on her way south from the cave entrance that the druid army is about to pop up over here so yeah just follow the road south hit scam meanwhile the army coming out of the caves hit siror and then by that point this army will hopefully be healed up to hit fust and i should be able to get ice glade with a combination of the units that i have on the flowers of solace there and the shadow stalkers which will be coming up in this direction so a lot of things a lot of pieces moving around right now but it'll hopefully all come together and like i said watching my flank i've got these units about to come down that cave entrance there I'm just going to pop them out right where i thought some units might show up so by that point i will have a uh, plenty powerful force in this area to deal with them too. So I think I've got Grelka covered from just about every possible angle that I can think of. If she's got any other surprises up her sleeve, I certainly haven't seen them coming. The only thing I'm not sure about is the small group of units I saw in this area that were coming for Tushari, but had to turn around when they saw my sta Shadow Stalkers in there. I don't really know for sure where they went. I'm thinking maybe they went to Ice Glade. They could have gone down this cave entrance here now that I think of it. Uh, they might be headed that way, which would put them near my dwarf city. I do have units headed back this way in general, so I could maybe move them back and forth between these roads uh, as necessary to cover both cities. At least I can see that cave exit there thanks to that tower, so if anything comes down there, I'll know about it pretty quickly. All right, I think that watch, that uh, that pretty much wraps this one up, guys. Thanks so much for all your comments and all your support, and I will see you in the next episode.